Also in 2021, we will provide you, of course, with an overview of focus areas for industry to comply with chemical legislation in Asia Pacific. For a first hand update on this, we will connect with Jeff Lee from PNG. Hi, Jeff. We appreciate that you will be our guide in the wonderful jungle of chemical control legislation in Asia. Since you are based in Beijing, it would be great if you could start with an update on China, where on January 1, 2021, MEE Order 12 has come into force. Hi, dear. Thanks a lot for ChemCon invitation. As you just mentioned, 2021 is the first year China implements Order 12, which is very important for China new chemical legislation and uh, relevant to a lot of industry. The direction of the amendment from Order 7 to Order 12 is to have less pre registration and more post-market surveillance. A lot more technical guidance is under development with some have already been published, like the risk assessment guideline. Overall, I would say it's the right trend, and I'm happy to see authorities more open up. A huge benefit from Order 12 implementation is a low volume chemicals introduction by either notification or simplified registration, which will significantly reduce the number of total registration in China. As industry has already been paying enough attention, a watch out area is the persistency and uh, bioaccumulation identification. The good thing is, PMB criteria are basically the same in China as in EU REACH, though requires further update. And if there's P and O B property, then a higher data packaging will be needed. Comparing with the uh, Order 7, potentially 10 to 100 registration could be facing a bigger challenge if carrying P and O B properties. Thank you for this overview in a nutshell. Are there still specific tests that have to be done on Chinese fish, for instance? Or can GLP tests performed for European REACH be reused? A good uh, signal is we see further data flexibility is given with uh, accepting more modeling data instead of real testing data. This could be beyond the QSA data, which has already been specified in regulation guidance. A recent SEC training shared the plan of collecting industry models for promoting computational toxicology. This is a good opportunity for industry to participate, contribute, and promote state-of-art science and technology. We may not see immediate application in new chemical registration, probably, but uh, this is definitely the trend we can foresee for future. One watch out for China, we need to carefully look at the need for compliance beyond the registration notification. As I mentioned earlier for post-market surveillance, there will be more record keeping, online information publication, downstream communication, etc. All these will be strengthened in the implementation of new regulation. Good to know. Are there other reported regulations in China that industry should keep an eye on in 2021? Of course, uh, there's a lot of regulation emerging in China. For example, the draft law on safety of hazardous chemicals. However, due to my personal limitation, I'm more looking at the potential publication of the existing chemical control legislation, which is an overarching regulation for managing all the chemicals in China market. The draft was released earlier and now still under Ministry of Justice. We've seen a lot of elements reflected in Order 12, including the focus on PBT and uh, equivalent chemicals, as well as the new usage management, etc. We will keep an eye out for this. Let's switch our focus to Korea. In December 2021, there is in Korea, of course, the first registration deadline for K-REACH. Any insights, tips and tricks you can share with us? 2021 will be the year that Korea needs to complete the first batch of existing chemical registrations for higher than a thousand ton per year. The first one is regarding the data requirement. It is not identical as the EU. There are similar data waiving 
read a course, cues acceptance in career as in EU. But uh, as I said, the real implementation could differ. For example, uh, there's not a detailed guidance for using read across. So a satisfactory read across justification is critical for meeting the data requirement in career. Also, it's not allowed for QSA for higher than 10 ton registration as stated in regulation, which limited a lot of uh, data usage. Government will manually check for compliance for the dossier submission within 30 days. So it's not automatic that you'll be receiving registration code after one month. It's different versus the EU reach and uh, early submission is recommended. We should not expect a similar situation as in EU that industry submitted registration at the last minute. Another one is regarding polymer joint registration. This is the first practice in the world without any precedence experience. How to define the sameness and how to organize the data for joint polymer registration, this would be a very challenging case for Korea. Due to numerous industry advocacy, authorities considering the potential postponing of polymer registration deadline. More than enough for industry to do in Korea and other parts of Asia. But Asia Pacific also includes Australia, where in July last year the Australian Industrial Chemicals Introduction Scheme replaced the NICNES scheme. How are things faring in Australia? It is a complete uh, overhaul of traditional chemical legislation. It uh, imposes uh, self-categorization before you file any chemical registration, which means industry needs to do a lot more self-judgment rather than simple filing a notification or registration and a leave decision to authority. While the intent is to simplify industry burden, in reality it brings a completely new need for compliance activities for whole industry. The question is, are you ready? Good news is that it uh, offers two-year transition period. Clearly, uh, traditional ways of managing compliance in Australia no longer works. There is a need to set up a new process for meeting the self categorization There will be a lot more record keeping and the need to have a scheme to retrieve information like uh, database searching or supply information, etc. For example, in order to exclude a certain category when the exposure band goes to three or four, you have to get hold of the original testing report, even you are not using it for registration purpose. There will be an animal testing ban for cosmetic, which is newly introduced into Australia chemical registration system. Since this is a new practice and quite complicated, I would suggest looking at the exceptions given and uh, understand how it can be implemented. For example, read across from analog chemical with new animal testing is acceptable for cosmetic ingredient categorization and introduction. However, it's not allowed when both target chemical and source chemical are for sole cosmetic use in Australia. X is doing great job developing and publishing new laws support on X website, which you can find easily. But uh, internal preparation is the most critical. Eventually, when you are audited, company needs to show robust evidence how you make the judgment for enjoying the benefit of exemption and notification especially. As usual, a lot of things are happening in Asia Pacific. Any specific legislation our Camp Connection viewers should watch out for? Yes, uh, 
Asia Pacific is always uh, one of the hottest regions with uh, chemical legislations. There is a development in Thailand, in Vienna. Well, the watch out I would like to call out is India with its uh, draft chemical safety rule. 2021 could be the first year to publish such a major chemical legislation in India. But uh, we know there's uh, not any certainty. There has been four consultation paper published for comments, broadly or partially in past one plus year, which shows the determination of India to move forward quickly. And uh, if not for the pandemic, definitely it will be finalized in 2021. The biggest challenge or biggest complexity of this uh, chemical safety rule is that it's one regulation combining traditional three regulations together. General chemical control, GHS implementation, and uh, occupational health and safety regulation. Industry has been providing a lot of comments while partially have been ex uh, accepted by authority. For example, the one ton threshold for notification. While I'm specialized in chemical control legislation, I still see quite some challenges for India chemical safety rule. The most important element for one regulation is the scope. In the latest draft, there is no indication of uh, exclusion of those regulated by other regulations, for example, food, drug, Finnish cosmetics, etc. Though we heard verbally from authority that uh, those categories would be excluded from the rules, we yet need to see the written changes in regulation. Second, the current draft rules propose a significant cost for notification and uh, notification update. For example, there's a general notification to collect all the in-market chemical information in India, and uh, there's a significant uh, notification fee, not the registration fee, which is up to more than 8,000 USD per chemical. This will be the highest in the world and are likely to be implemented considering the industry burden. Also, there is a, a spectral data requirement for above notification, which means another 10,000 USD cost for each notification. Absolutely, this is uh, still under advocating from industry, but we are not sure what could be the final requirement. The Third one is regarding prioritization. There will be a requirement to register priority chemicals defined by authority, which is a much higher requirement than notification. The list of priority chemicals has significantly increased from originally 26 to 750 chemicals. But uh, without specifying the reason for the addition or what criteria has been used. There should be a transparent and uh, risk-based uh, scientific scheme to define the priority of these chemicals. The last but not the least is about the grace period. Current given grace period of uh, 18 months is still too short considering the capability and the capacity of India industry and the global practice. At least a three to five years grace period should be considered. Certainly, there are other elements that should be shaped further. As a major economy, also with the combination of three legislations, India, it's definitely a key watch out for 2021. Jeff, thank you very much for this informative talk. Let's hope we can all travel again in Asia Pacific in the near future.